Good morning. Uh, I'm Liam Knott. I'm the minimal, Minimally Invasive Surgery Fellow at Albany Medical Center. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Sages for the opportunity to present our work and to the moderators for their time. Uh, our study is uh, titled Comparison of Robotic Assisted Laparoscopic and Open Surgery in Primary Inguinal Hernia. Uh, I have no dis disclosures. Uh, Dr. Singh is a consultant for Intuitive, Medtronic, and Ethicon. Our collaborators, uh, Ms. Shi and Ms. Song, are employed by the Department of Global Health, Economics, and Outcomes Research with Intuitive Surgical, and Intuitive Surgical provided data and analysis to support this study. Uh, to start with a little uh, background, uh, inguinal hernia is performed nearly 800,000 times yearly in the United States. Uh, we set out to look at the longitudinal recurrence and reoperation rates for three different modalities of inguinal hernia. There are advantages and disadvantages for these modalities. Uh, the minimally invasive approach has been shown to reduce post-operative pain and has shown an early return to normal activities. Uh, recent studies have shown robotic-assisted inguinal hernia repair to be safe and feasible. To obtain our data, we utilize the US-based large claim database, Truven Market Scan. We aim to perform a retrospective database analysis study comparing open inguinal hernia with minimally invasive approaches, both laparoscopic and robotic. We analyzed both the inguinal hernia reoperation rate as well as the specific inguinal hernia recurrence rate. We evaluated the Truven Market Scan commercial and Medicare supplemental databases from 2013 to 2015. We looked at patients that had a primary inguinal hernia repair in the outpatient setting that had the CPT codes for open or laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair, as well as those patients that had the robotic inguinal hernia CPT modifier code. We excluded patients that had recurrent CPT codes as their uh, initial operation, as well as those that had concomitant gastrointestinal or genital urinary surgery, as well as those patients that were not over 18 years old. Uh, we also excluded patients that were not enrolled with the insurance provider for greater than six months prior to the operation, as we were unable to evaluate comorbidities for these patients. Our primary outcome measure was length of time to any inguinal hernia reoperation. We classified these reoperations to either repair of recurrent inguinal hernia, those patients that underwent a reoperation with the CPT code for recurrent inguinal hernia repair, or patients that had a second inguinal hernia repair during the study period that was not coded as a recurrent operation, but as a primary inguinal hernia repair. We then performed a descriptive analysis of the patient demographics and clinical characteristics. We performed a survival analysis using Kaplan-Meier survival curve to evaluate recurrence and reoperation rates during the study period. We also performed the Cox proportional regression model to, with covariates including age, gender, uh, obesity, and smoking. Uh, here we have the flow chart of the study. Between July 1, 2013 and September 30, 2015, we found 119,000 inguinal hernia repairs. Of these patients, 47,000 were excluded uh, due to the uh, previously mentioned exclusion criteria. We had an eligible patient population that totaled 71,000 patients. 47,000 of these patients had an open repair of their inguinal hernia uh, with an average of 383 days follow-up. 24,000 uh, patients had a laparoscopic procedure with an average follow-up of 376 days. And we had 253 patients that had a robotic repair with an average follow-up of 267 days. Uh, when we look at the demographics of the three groups, uh, unfortunately, the groups were not uh, completely similar. The uh, open group had uh, tended to have a higher chance of being older, greater than 65. Uh, they had a higher chance of having an incarcerated or strangulated hernia, and their comorbidity score was on average higher. The minimally invasive group was much more likely to have bilateral inguinal hernias. When we looked at the reoperation rate in the Kaplan Meier survival curve, we found that patients with an initial open inguinal hernia repair had a significantly higher reoperation rate than the minimally invasive group during the study period. We found that the overall reoperation rate in the open group was 4%, compared with 3.6% for uh, laparoscopic. 
this was uh, significant. The reoperation rate for the robotic group was 2.8%, but we only had uh, 253 patients in the study, so we didn't have any significance there. When we looked at the uh, Cox regression model, the reoperation rate was lower and significantly significant in the minimally invasive group than in the open group, uh, and there was not a statistical significance in the robotic group. When we looked at the risk of recurrent hernia repair during the study, there was a significant increase of risk in recurrence in the minimally invasive group compared to the open group. Uh, these patients, uh, these are patients that had a second inguinal hernia repair during the study time coded specifically as a recurrence. Uh, the overall rates was, were 0.9% in the um, open group I'm sorry, 0.9% in the laparoscopic group and 0.7% in the open group. So our data did show uh, thus far that the reoperation rate following the minimally invasive inguinal hernia repair is lower than an open surgery. Uh, this may account for patients that are found to have bilateral inguinal hernias at the time of the index operation that are both repaired, obviating a need for a second primary inguinal hernia repair. We did see a statistically significant increase in the risk of inguinal hernia recurrence in the minimally invasive group. Uh, there have been multiple studies that with uh, data showing either uh, slightly increased risk in laparoscopic or uh, equivalent uh, reoperation rates. Uh, however, it is, uh, do have to take note that there's only 0.9% uh, and 0.7% recurrence, so these rates are low. Uh, this leads to our oh, sorry, uh, limitations. Uh, currently, our average follow-up is only 385 days, with the follow-up rate in the robotic group even shorter at an average of 265 days. Uh, we're continuing uh, data collection and hope to have more robust data in the future with more robotic cases included as well as longer follow-up times across all groups. Um, so in conclusion, uh, we did find that minimally invasive approach for uh, primary inguinal hernia is associated with a lower risk of reoperation, and we did find a higher risk of recurrence in the laparoscopic approach compared to open. Uh, thank you for your time, and answer any questions. <laughs>